So if you came to the last health lecture, one of the things I said was it's not if you're toxic, it's, it's how toxic are you, really. That's, that's actually the point at this point. So think of it as, you know, we relate to a car. You know, in my clinic, I always talk about metaphors. And you do spend time getting your oil changed. Why? To run more cleaner and more efficient. Well, same with the body, right? The spring in Chinese medicine is always the best time to cleanse. And so here we are, it's the time. Um, and it's so much easier when you do it with other people, right? So we are going to learn um, from this amazing local woman who's been, I've known her for a long time. Um, she's actually been on this stage two other times, is that true? Okay. And we are, um, she has a company in town that is actually online as well as local. So I would suggest that after listening to this, um, I don't even want to call it a lecture, um, a download, information, education to inspire and empower you to take control over what you're putting in as food as medicine. And so one of the things that she will mention at the end, that if you are here tonight present, you actually get a special gift from me. And we'll, maybe, Jenny, you'll notice it after, okay. So if you're in the audience here tonight, you're gonna to get a lot out of it. Um, but for those of you that are watching, we will send you an email with details, because this is a very time, um, time uh, what, what do I wanna say? It's very specific. The, the window of time that is available to actually cleanse the liver. And so this is actually the time that we want to do it. So um, I just want to get a show of hands. Who has never done a cleanse or detox? Wow. Oh my God, this is great. You guys are in for a real treat. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, a treat. <laughs> so, if you, have, if you were here last lecture or watched the video, Dr. Bean talked about living her life here and she was feeling awesome until she experienced, was it chiropractic? And you brought yourself yes. up to here. It's like you don't even know where you could be living your life from. And you will learn that, hopefully feel it after this cleanse. So this woman has been doing cleanses and detoxes for 20 years. She's, she's done famous people in LA. She's She's literally fine-tuned this specific cleanse for us um, very specifically. We, she's also including two other local powerhouses um, that she will announce, and you also know about them because they're, they're here tonight. And this is a, not only a community cleanse and detox, but we're gonna be doing it together as a community. So it's like just, tr it's a trifecta. So I'm really excited. So without further ado, Jennifer Brewer. <laughs> Doug, uh, <laughs> so um, I am Jenny Brewer. Thank you so much for being here. And before I get started, I want to first of all thank you for coming out on a beautiful Sunday evening. So thank you, and also acknowledge you for making it through six weeks of the challenge. So give yourself a round of applause. Things that intrigues me the most about the challenge is the opportunity to try so many different exercises. And so I'm curious if a few of you want to share, what has that experience been like? Was there an exercise that you thought you'd hate that you loved? Or on the other side of it, were you did, did you think you'd love something and actually didn't enjoy it? Does anyone have anything? Yeah. CrossFit. I thought I'd love it more, but I, when I did it, I'm just, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so you're like, it was like you were really thinking that was oh, I thought it was gonna be the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 great. It was like me with the bar class. <laughs> like really? Oh, I was just overworked. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, there's three. I didn't think I would like this golf, but that was like my favorite. It was so yeah. fun. It was so fun. It's nice to be out there in nature and everything. I was terrible at it. <laughs> hey, that doesn't matter. The team is here. <laughs> Good job. Anyway. Yeah. I have found that um, regardless of the class, whether it was beneficial, whether I felt comfortable or not, the community and mm. seeing the other challengers there, that supported me through it. Right. So it might not have been for me, mm -hmm. but I had Excellent, what a good point, what a good point. And I just think it's such a great opportunity to try things on in your body to see, because when you're thinking about something, you're like, I think CrossFit, I've heard about CrossFit, 
But when your body is into it, it will really tell you whether or not something is going to work for you. So I'm curious, how many of you have done that with your diet? Tried on different things to see how it works for you? A little bit? Good. So that's what I'm talking about tonight. Um, I think that's one of the most powerful parts of cleansing, is the opportunity to really get in touch with your body. So like um, they mentioned, I've been a nutritionist for 20 years. So I started when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> Child prodigy. And, a, and a, a certified chef for 15. And I, through my experience of doing group cleanses and also facilitating um, or working with people one-on-one, -on -one, I am confident that a, an intentional cleanse can really change your life. Because on a physical level, I think a cleanse is one of the fastest and most efficient ways to get in touch with your body's cues. So the more awareness you can bring to your hunger and fullness and to how food makes you feel when you eat it, the more you can start to rely on those cues to tell you what to eat um, and how much to eat. On a spiritual level, a cleanse is a great opportunity, as you'll know, as you'll see, to press the pause button and to slow down a little bit and just get more mindful and contemplative about how we're living our lives. And this combination of physical and spiritual makes it easier for us to tune in to the guidance of our body. So we can stop trying to figure out food with our brains only and start to rely more on our bodies. And the benefit of turning up our internal messages is that we can start to turn down all of those extraneous messages out there about how what we should be eating. It's everywhere, isn't it? And it's so loud and you don't know really what to trust. So tuning more into your body brings more trust, ease, and joy into your relationship with food because you just don't have to worry about it as much. Um, I, I just love the transformation that happens when people go on a cleanse. And I feel like um, being able to guide people through that process is such a joy. Um, when somebody gives up coffee and quiets her mind so she can enjoy her daily walks again, or not drinking a glass of wine, of wine at night can really make someone evaluate how they spend their time. But I also equally love empowering clients to bring those things back, caffeine, sugar, alcohol, in a more sustainable way, so don't get worried. <laughs> in fact, I'm wearing my coffee socks just for the coffee drinkers in the room. Where are you, coffee drinkers? Yeah. I'm one of you too, and I love it. And there's a really sustainable way to have those foods in our diet and make it something that um, where we can feel good in our bodies and enjoy what we're doing. So can, we, can I get the handout? So I have made a handout for you. I'm gonna talk briefly about what I think are three major benefits of going on a food-based cleanse program. So the first, that'll be coming around, but the first, um, benefit of doing a cleanse is that you get off what I call the crash diet. <laughs> Bear with me. I don't know how much hard work I'll try to do here, but so you'll you'll have your hand out. You you can take notes on this. But when I say crash, what I mean is um, one of my business mentors, Brendan Bouchard, uh, said has a really good saying. He says, "You don't have energy." You generate it. And so when I'm talking about this crash diet, I'm talking about the difference between kind of like artificial forms of energy that we reach for and things that are actually more sustainable and genuine and actually like our deepest energy. So what do you, anyone want to gather a guess what C in crash is? Caffeine. Caffeine. Yep. So caffeine gives us a jolt because it increases our cortisol levels. So does anyone know what cortisol is? Have you heard of that before? It's our stress hormone. So by increasing our stress hormones, it actually gives us that feeling of alertness. Not sustainable and over time can actually drain our adrenal glands, okay? Um, our refined brains. So here I am gonna actually draw something for you. Kind of taking back to a biology 
lesson here, um, so bear with me. Um, so, have any of you seen the, a picture of a whole grain before? Like any any does, any um, depiction of that? So you have this is going to be my representation of a whole grain here. So wheat, oat, um, rye, whatever the grain is, this is the, the general composition of it. So you have the outer coating of a grain which is called the bran. The bran is what prevents um, predators from getting in and eating it. So what do you think it's high in? What's the bran, what's the composition of the bran gotta be for protection? Shell. It's like, it's like a, a shell, so it's fiber. Then you've got the germ here, which is just as the name implies, it's what germinates the plant here. It's what would, it would, pro, it would be um, what would proliferate the plant. And because of that, the germ is where all of the vitamins and minerals are. Again, sorry about, I wasn't promising much with this artwork, and I am delivering. Um, and then, so the inside of the grain is called the endosperm or starch. This is mainly calories or energy. Um, so the, the, what I want to point out about grains is that, you know, we hear a lot about um, grains. Like we either hear that we shouldn't be eating them or that if we um, or we need to cut back on them. But I think the thing about grains that is really important is that we need to be making sure that when we eat them, they're not refined. Because a refined grain basically means that the food manufacturer has taken the fiber and separated out, and that usually goes to cereal companies for bran flakes. It's taken the germ and separated that out into those glass jars of wheat germ. And where do you need to keep that? In the fridge because it's so good for you, it's so, it has so many good things going for it that it will spoil. What we generally eat is the endosperm or the starch. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the, you know, that's what's really the big thing when it comes to energy. And it's basically that the minerals in particular in the germ um, are crucial for regulating our blood sugar. So one of them in particular is called chromium. Are you familiar with this? So oftentimes if somebody has um, metabolic syndrome or, or has a problem regulating their insulin, they'll, they'll be, it'll be recommended that they take chromium. Chromium is naturally found in whole grains, but because we're eating refined, we're not getting the, the mineral that we need to balance our blood sugar. So if you see, we're just eating calories and we're spiking our blood sugar, but our body doesn't really have what it needs to utilize that energy efficiently. So refined grains are the R, and then A, anyone? Alcohol. It's, this is all the good stuff, I think. Um, but the, the problem with alcohol is it stimulates our brain to produce more stress hormones. So it can be very, very dehydrating and um, and debilitating over time, and oftentimes we we're using it in more in kind of a sedative way, but it actually is very disruptive to sleep. So that doesn't help with energy either. S is for sugar. Sugar um, also raises raises our stress hormones and can be very draining. And then H, I want to talk about. So H actually stands for hidden food sensitivities. And what do I mean by that? It's not an allergy. So food allergy and food sensitivity are two different things. A food allergy is something that you probably already know you have if you have it. So it's like it, it, you have an immediate reaction when you eat something like peanuts or shellfish or strawberries. A sensitivity is something that can occur more over time or based on where you are in um, basically in life and how full 
your shopping cart or your liver is. So something that you, you might have been able to enjoy for years, all of a sudden you eat it and it's causing you gastrointestinal distress or headaches. The problem is you might not even know it because you're not necessarily paying attention to it. So a good cleanse will include some type of elimination and challenge diet. Have you ever heard of that before? It's the gold standard. So if you were to go to a, a GI doctor or, um, or somebody like a, a, a naturopath who was really interested in alternative medicine and they suspected that a food sensitivity could be causing some symptoms that you might have, they would put you on like 14 or 21 day elimination diet where you, you're pulling out things like dairy, gluten, corn, eggs, kind of like the biggies, and then you're gradually reintroducing them every few days when the program is over because you're such a clean slate at that point, it's really hard to ignore the, the messages that your body is sending you. So benefit one of a cleanse is that you get off the crash diet. Um, number two is that this over here. you go usually go on some type of eating program where you're supplying your body with the nutrients that it actually needs for cleansing and detoxifying. Not every cleanse has that. In fact, some cleanses have you drinking like lemon cayenne juice for 14 days, but there really isn't necessarily um, the focus on like what your liver actually needs to thrive. So let me, I am gonna draw this. I apologize. <laughs> The liver. That is really bad. Okay, so this is a representation of your liver. And what happens, by the way, I mean, your liver is like, I feel like we should give a round of applause to our <laughs> livers because what our livers do for, I mean, really. <laughs> I mean, when I remind people that our liver is directly responsible for fat metabolism and storage, it's responsible for how we process and, and use our hormones, just those two things alone makes you want to keep it happy, right? So let's talk about what a happy liver looks like. So there is um, phase one and phase two detoxification of your liver. I'm not, you're not going to get quiz on this or anything like that. It sounds really technical, but um, basically a toxin comes into your liver and is, it goes right into this phase one de detoxification where it's broken down into, um, into less or into um, more usable in order to get going to phase two. So the required nu nutrients for phase one are the B vitamins, Anyone know where we find B vitamins? Whole grains, some in, in fruits and vegetables, folic acid, um, antioxidants, like milk thistle is really good. So some milk thistle tea this time of year, very good for your liver. Carotenoids. Now, do you know where those are? Mm -hmm. Carrots and, and orange stuff. Sweet potatoes um, are very high in carotenoids. Also, leafy greens, vitamin E and vitamin C. So, phase one, these nu nutrients are required for breaking down those toxins into metabolites that can then enter into phase two. So, basically, we're talking mainly about fruits and vegetables here. So then they, they end the, those metabolites enter into phase two, and these nu nutrients that are required are amino acids, and you know where we find those, protein, which makes um, you know, a, a cleanse that doesn't include some type of protein really challenging, because actually what you're doing is you're, you're breaking down those toxins, and then they, they can't get broken down into phase two. Um, sulfur containing foods. And if anybody can tell me what this is, that'd be great. Anyone? What's a sulfur-containing food? Onions, garlic. Onions, garlic. 
uh, broccoli, the, 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 the crucifers. Sorry. Brussels, yo, no, great. But Brussels sprouts, bok choy, kale. So these are um, the crucifers, onions, and garlic. So what I like to remind my clients is that it's not about not drinking wine, but it's usually about like having some kale salad with it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what do we normally drink when we, I mean, what, what goes well with wine? Cheese and crackers. I mean, we don't need cheese and crackers. We need, <laughs> we need this. And so I think, again, this, this isn't an all or nothing thing. And I, a good cleanse can actually teach you um, how, how to make like healthy food something that's actually part of your lifestyle so that it isn't, you don't feel deprived. Um, and there, there are ways to put those foods on the crash list back in in a more sustainable way, for sure. Okay, so that is the second benefit of a cleanse. And then the third benefit, which I would be lying if I didn't tell you that this was my favorite part of a good cleanse, is when you learn how to make healthy food part of your lifestyle. And to me, that means that it tastes really delicious. Because who wants it if it's not delicious, right? So this is where I've spent the majority of my time in my career is teaching people how to make healthy foods taste really good so that it's something that they look forward to. Because I think what happens is, can anyone relate to feeling like there's the, the healthy you and then the fun you? <laughs> and like, this is you Monday through Friday, maybe Monday through Thursday, if you're being realistic. But then like the fun you gets to come out on the weekends and vacations and stuff. And I just do think there's a certain amount of um, indulgence that needs to happen. But I think it's much easier when you can kind of come into the center and be a little bit more moderate so that you are actually not swinging back and forth. That staying consistent with healthy eating feels like not a chore. And I think that that really comes when you're excited about healthy food. It sounds simplistic, but um, it really makes a difference when you're like, ooh, cashew cheese, it's delicious, instead of like, oh, I'm not eating dairy. You know, it just makes a, it makes a huge difference. So let's talk about two ways to make healthy food more satisfying. I'm gonna teach you some, um, one chef secret for making healthy food more delicious, and that is this word. Umami. Have you heard of this before? Um, umami. So what is umami? Those of you who know. It's, it's like a savory quality. It's actually classified as the fifth taste, but it's really not, it's not, um, we have our, our taste sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and spicy. Actually, the, it's the, the sixth taste, they call it. But it's actually not a taste as much as it is a sensation. So your taste buds have umami receptors, and those receptors send signals to your frontal cortex that say, yum, like <laughs> you just ate something really, really good. So where we, where we get umami is in um, savory foods, like mushrooms, yep, mushrooms, tomatoes, Red wine has it. Um, soy, sauce. soy sauce, yes, absolutely. Soy sauce, uh, miso has umami. Tahini? Tahini, you might have a little bit, yeah. So, what the, 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 um, the scientist who discovered umami actually named it. Um, umami and found that it was the glutamate in foods that was triggering the response. So in all their infinite wisdom, food manufacturers were like, oh great, there's this thing that we can add to food to make people like light up in their brain, we'll do it. And we'll call it MSG and it will be really addictive. And it is. But the good thing is we can take that information when we're cooking healthy foods and we can use it to our advantage. And we can say, you know, especially if you're cooking for somebody who's like really, really trans really needs to transition to like a healthy way of eating and is struggling, like 
I just don't like vegetables. I just don't like vegetables. Making a miso sauce to go on the vegetables or putting some nutritional yeast in a salad dressing. For, like they won't even know it's there. But it's like, ooh, this kind of, hmm, this is good. Um, tomatoes are really good, soy sauce. And so using healthy sources of umami can really help the transition to more fruits and vegetables, for sure. And then the, so that helps on the making healthy food more delicious, but then when it comes to your appetite. So let me just give you a quick difference. So fullness, how full you feel after a meal is actually a physical response. So that's actually like how much food you have in your stomach and it's like pressing on there. Like I feel full, but I feel satisfied is a hormonal response. That's actually governed by something called leptin. Are you familiar with, have you heard of this hormone before? Mm -hmm. Leptin. So leptin tells your brain, I've had enough. I'm totally satisfied. So have you ever had the experience of eating until you're full, but like you still want something? It's like, ooh, ooh. That's your appetite. So you're not hungry, but you have an appetite for something, right? What the, the two food components that turn on leptin are monounsaturated fat. Turns on leptin in a good way. So basically, it, monounsaturated fats cause leptin to be released, which basically says to your brain, I've had enough. Monounsaturated fats are avocado. So like, if you, if you find that you're feeling that way after lunch, like two o'clock is coming around and you're like, oh, I don't feel hungry, but I want something. It's like avocado would be great. Nuts and seeds are also a great source of monounsaturated fat. So pumpkin seeds are one of my favorite things to sprinkle on a salad to make it more satisfying, to make sure that I'm getting those good fats. And omega-3 fats. And where do we find those? Fish, cold water fish, <laughs> cold water pills, cold water fish, and um, flax, and and um, in eggs that where they've eaten flax. Yep, flax and um, some other nuts like walnuts. Our body isn't isn't as efficient with the plant-based sources of omega threes as it is with the fish, but those are still um, good sources. So. When you're thinking about your when you're thinking about your healthy diet, if you're finding yourself not as satisfied um, with the taste or with that with that appetite uh, feeling, then definitely um, focusing a little bit on the umami and ways to add that, and then also making sure that your food. I, I think it's a good idea to make sure that every meal you have includes a monounsaturated or an omega three. It's a good way to make sure that you are, you are getting your appetite to be satisfied. Okay. Any questions? I know I'm like kind of flying through. Anyone have any questions or anything? Yeah. Questions, I think. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the difference between appetite and hunger, mm -hmm. my kids are often saying they don't feel hungry, but they still need to eat. Mm -hmm. so they want to eat. So I'm getting from your lecture that maybe they need more leptin in yeah. hormones. <laughs> yeah, or more good fats. But yeah. what is the um, what what is it? Why do we want leptin? I mean, what is our body saying when we don't have enough leptin? We're not getting these omega threes. We're not getting the fats we need to process. We're not getting yes or something like that. It's driven that way. Yes, exactly. So we're not getting the fats that we need to be satisfied. You know, I, I had a um. I had one of those kind of aha moments when I went to culinary school. So I had studied Western new nutrition for eight years and, um, and learned a lot, but it really wasn't until I went to culinary school and my very first lecture, it was called Whole Foods Dynamics, and the founder of the culinary school basically said, so what if our need, that constant need to eat, that constant grazing, was actually a search for new nutrition? Yeah. So that's kind of the, that's the premise there, is okay. that it's like your body's like, nope, nope, not, not yet, not yet. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. that's a great question. And I don't know if your body talks like that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I want to tell you, um, 
a little bit about the, this cleanse that Lisa mentioned. So how many of you, let me see a show of hands, so how many of you think that it might serve you to get a little bit off the crash diet? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and how about, how many of you think your liver could use a little more love from fruits and vegetables? <laughs> It definitely could. It could use, I mean, most of us need to be eating so many more fruits and vegetables than we do. And then um, how about, do you, think, how, do you think spending a little more time thinking about flavor profile of your healthy foods and making sure that it's really balanced would help you feel more satisfied? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'm excited to tell you about this cleanse that we've put together for you. I'm calling it the um, Spring Vitality Cleanse. Because that's really what I think it's, it's about, is um, just reclaiming that natural energy. So again, it's not like we're, gen we're, we're generating large portions, right? So the, you know, you want to eat just, the, you want to eat to that point where you're getting all of that, um, all of those things you need, but you're getting it in, in a small portion. It's just so much easier for our bodies. So it's a 14 day cleanse with two days of juicing in the middle, but it comes with 20 days of support and here's what that support looks like. There are four group calls. So there's an intro call where we um, go over the program and set our really discover our intentions for the program, what we're hoping to get out of it. There are two cooking classes where I show you how to make those like umami rich recipes. So recipes like pumpkin seed crusted fish or tempeh. Um, make sure you get those omega those um, omegas and the monounsaturated lentil and amaranth meatballs, the zucchini pasta, some yummy stuff, scallion and chive, cashew cream, um, or ca cashew cheese. So really highlighting those foods that your liver needs to make sure that you are um, getting the proper de detoxification. There are cooking videos for the recipes that aren't covered in the cooking classes. So there's an avocado and um, kale pasta in there, which is ridiculously delicious. There's a buckwheat and apple granola, a fermented um, chia seed pudding that you can use to re replace yogurt, because that's tough. So you can actually make a chia seed pudding that has probiotics in it so that you're getting that. And so you can learn all of those in cooking videos. There's a daily meal plan and shopping list that I've organized for you. I send you daily support emails because cleansing is not easy. It's not for sissies. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I really want to make sure you have support. And then there's a members page where there are more recipes and that, that's where you actually watch the videos and you can actually comment and talk to each other on that um, as well. So that is the overview of the program. Um, can I get another sheet of paper? Oh, thank you. I was just trying to come over the back. I appreciate it. Okay. So, let me tell you um, about this. So, the, the cleanse is um, $249 on my website uh, because you guys are in the challenge and you've already, you've already made an investment in your health and um, so we wanted to discount that to $197 to take $50 off. Well, wait. There's more. There's more. <laughs> so I want to take you back to the beginning of the program or the beginning of my talk where I talked about that spiritual aspect of slowing down. And so that, that, that two-day juice cleanse right in the middle, it's awesome when somebody does those juices for you. I mean, I provide recipes, but when that weekend, I actually encourage you to do it over a weekend. When that weekend is like, your biggest decision is you opening your fridge and saying, should I have this juice or this juice? It's like, it's so much easier to get into that kind of like contemplative place of really, you know, feeling into your hunger and what's it like to not eat for that two days. It, it's really nice when those juices are, are um, done for you. And wouldn't it be great if there was a local juice company <laughs> that provided amazing juices full of integrity. These juices from La Vie are, um, they're really high quality. They're all probiotic, which means that you're getting that dose like as if you were drinking kefir or, um, 
or yogurt or something. And um, Leslie and Steve are here tonight, and Ye Yin has put together uh, an offer so that two days of juices come with this uh, price. I know. So awesome. When people buy it on my, my site, they're going to need to pay more for the juices, but we really wanted to do something special for challengers. And I, I just love, I mean, one of the things I love about what you two ladies, amazing ladies, have created here is that we are supporting our community. And so having a local juice company, um, and it's just, it's just really great. It's so awesome. So, so that comes with two days of juices and all of the things that I mentioned before. And then also to, uh, tonight, if you buy, Ms. Lita has agreed to offer her, deta her detox acupuncture session for $25 off, right? Which is great. And um, $25 off a detox session. And also, if you sign up tonight, Levy is also going to give you one of their new wellness shots, these cute little bottles of, um, of juices that they have. And you, did you bring the, the digestive? Digestive, which is really great. So these things are so potent that um, I, I was on a walk, a hike with my dog, and I turned my ankle, and um, I went right home and drank the, the turmeric. I was like, oh, I need this. Like, I could just really, like, it was really well, well timed. I was like, I'm so glad that I have this. So these wellness shots are really, really cool. So you also get one of those. Um, and that's, and that's that. So if you're feeling inspired to join us, we're gonna, um, we're gonna, we're gonna do this thing together. We're gonna love each other through the coffee, giving up the coffee. And um, the other thing I should mention is that those 20 days of support around that 14 days comes with some pre-cleansing information. And then on the other side, which is even more important, it comes with how to make this sustainable. So all of the things, I mean, how many of us have like done something really big or like gone to a seminar and you're all inspired and excited and then you're like fall right back into old habits. So one of the, having the, the support around the program is really intentional so that this is all of the things that you learn, you can actually carry into regular life. And I will guarantee you that you will be using these recipes over and over again. You'll love them. Yeah? Um, would it still work to, for example, uh, like Katie's Thursday, to start a few days after the group? Would it still be okay to do that? It would be fine. Everything, everything on the website part of it is recorded. So if you find that it's like time-wise, it, you need to start, you, you, can, you, you can do the videos and things whenever it works for you. The only thing would be the, the, the juices and figuring out with Libby when to do that. But, um, but yeah, that, that's fine. And in fact, if you're, if you're thinking you would want to do a cleanse like this, but not necessarily the, the, the timing would work, then I would encourage you to do it because you'll have all the information that you'll need. Um, and you'll, of course, be learning a lot from everybody. So, I just want to add a couple things. Yeah, are you going to do, do this? Oh, yeah. I'm doing it. I know, she gave me so this little plate. She gave me this little plate. So, guys, I want to make a point about Yen because some of you guys got to meet Yen last class, um, and she's amazing, and I just adore her, and she has such an amazing company. Um, and you're getting six juices a day for two days, for two days, which is phenomenal. And she normally charges hundreds of dollars for that. So it, it is, it is, I can't stress enough what an amazing gift, um, but you do have to say yes, of course, um, and we will do it together. But um, I expect Anita and Tanya to be joining us, um, <laughs> <laughs> all, all, directors, um, all of us. So yeah, we're, we're just, thank you so much for your wisdom and just, uh, it's, I, I learn stuff from you all the time. I bought her a year long program, I don't even know if you knew that, so I've been getting her recipes and been studying and cooking it's been it's awesome. been great. It's been great. Awesome. So, and I'll be cleansing with you. I mean, that's the, the advantage of it. Um, and I think it's so it's so empowering to give up things that you're not sure that you can give up for a period of time, right? Because you're learning that in, in just the exercises that you're doing. It's so empowering to try CrossFit or to do these things. And um, and so it's just it's such a good practice. Yeah. So when, when is it? When is it? 
It will start May 9th is our first intro call, um, but the actual cleanse is May 11th, which is the Monday after Mother's Day. So a friend of mine said, that's the one day that my kids make me pancakes. Don't make me cleanse. So you can start Monday. <laughs>